What is I3C and DIM, and more importantly, should you take them? I3C is indole 3 carbonyl and DIM is diindolyl methane. Both of these compounds would normally be gotten from the diet eating cruciferous vegetables like broccoli, cauliflower, kale, bok choy, Brussels sprouts, cabbage. All of these things are high in compounds called glucosinolates. And when you eat them, glucosinolates are broken down into indole 3 carbonyl in the intestine. And then that's further broken down into DIM. Both I3C and DIM do some really cool things in the body, uh, especially with regard to HPV and cervical dysplasia. So the first thing, I3C and DIM help the liver break down estrogen into a more healthy metabolite. This has to do with something called um, 2-hydroxyestrone um, ratio or the amount of 2-hydroxyestrone. 2-hydroxyestrone is a more favorable metabolite of estrogen as opposed to some other more hazardous compounds that can be um, produced when you actually break down estrogen in the liver. So first thing that indole 3 carbonyl and DIM do is they help produce um, more healthy estrogen compounds when your body's trying to eliminate estrogen. There seems to be some evidence also that when you take I3C and DIM, it'll actually lower estrogen levels a little bit. The second thing that I3C and DIM do is they regulate cell signaling factors um, and tumor suppression genes. So a tumor suppression gene would be like the P53 tumor suppression gene. Um, one of the nasty things that HPV has the ability to do, especially the oncogenic varieties of HPV, um, like HPV 16 and 18 and the 12 or 13 other ones that are considered high risk is they have the ability to shut down things like tumor suppression genes like this P53 gene. Now, I, I talk about all of this in my book as, as well as some of the other mechanisms whereby HPV can initiate some of these dysplastic changes and ultimately cause cancer. So um, in upregulating P53 tumor suppression gene activity, I3C and DIM can help prevent the dysplastic change that can occur due to HPV as well as um, in some people what could ultimately develop into cancer. Now there are published studies that provide some insight as to the ability of I3C and DIM to have favorable effects on HPV and dysplasia. Here's a study that was published in 2009 looking at DIM and its ability to inhibit cervical dysplasia as well as alter estrogen metabolism, which I had mentioned about the liver breaking down estrogen. And um, actually a third thing that I hadn't really mentioned there was that it's also been shown to actually enhance the immune response um, as well. So in this study, it um, actually was looking at mice and they were looking at some trans, what are called transfected mice, where they can genetically manipulate um, mice and so that they all get cervical cancer. And they're useful sometimes to study on these animals. But in a, at the end of the day, um, DIM was shown to increase the what's called C2 hydroxylation, which is, again, this 2-hydroxyestrone um, production, which is a healthier estrogen metabolite, as opposed to something like 16-alpha-hydroxyestrone which is more related to cancer and some of the negative effects that we'd associate with estrogen in the same study than also serum uh, interferon gamma was increased, which indicated that there's an increased immune response to animals that were fed diindole methane. And then also they shown a uh, marked decrease in cervical dysplasia in the mice that were studied that were provided the DIM, so they found that there was a delay or inhibition of the progression from cervical dysplasia to cervical cancer. Um, and then also they found that in this um, HPV-16 transgenic mouse model, they have shown that DIM inhibit the development of E6 and E7 oncogene-induced cervical lesions. Now all high-risk strains of HPV have these E6 and E7 genes, or what are called oncogenes, and it's, it's noteworthy that this study showed that DIM actually can um, inhibit those effects of the E6 and E7 gene, uh, HPV gene, at causing uh, malignancy. This study published in 2009 um, demonstrated some of the effects I was talking about cell signaling effects and how HPV can shut down some of the normal cell signaling. I had mentioned the, specifically the P53 tumor suppression gene. In this study, they were looking at the fact that some, some natural products, and they were studying multiple products, this was a review, 
um, isoflavones that you find in soy products and other legumes, for example, indole-3-carbonyl, DIM, curcumin, EGCG, or, or green tea extract, resveratrol, lycopene. A whole bunch of these had inhibitory effects on, or had, they've been shown to have inhibitory effects on human and animal cancers, but they target multiple cellular signaling pathways. Some of these pathways include um, NF-kappa B and, and some of the other ones that are shown here, but um, I had mentioned the P53 just because that one's a little bit, we've known more about that for a longer period of time, but in effect um, I3C and DIM can regulate some of these cell signals. And the cell signal, what those mean is there's you know, there's signaling pathways inside of a cell that tell it whether what to do. So they're kind of instructions on whether they should grow or whether they should die. And all of these natural products in this study, including uh, DIM and I3C, were shown to activate uh, cell death signals and induce cell death in precancerous and cancer cells without affecting normal cells. Now, I don't throw every supplement at every person. I mean, I like to keep things cost effective and supplements can get really expensive. So I've mentioned this before in other videos, I tend to treat as per the severity. So I started off this video, you know, questioning, you know, should a person take I3C and DIM? And it just depends on the person, the circumstance, the severity of the dysplasia. I3C and DIM, um, are not necessarily, you know, on my top list. They're, they're, they're definitely on my list of things I'm more likely to use. If somebody's really trying to be cost effective, say that if you have um, HPV, it's a recent infection, what I would advocate is maybe to change your diet, adopt a more plant-based diet, and I talk about um, the reason to do that and, and how to do that in, in other videos. Um, you know, but if you're trying to keep it simple and trying to keep it cost effective and you only have HPV, maybe you only have mild dysplasia, um, there's other supplements I would probably take before DIM or I3C. But if, you know, if you've had HPV for a while or you're really stressed out about it and you're really trying to prevent HPV from causing dysplasia and you're also attempting to um, attempting to get rid of the HPV and, and you have and you can afford to do maybe more supplements then I3C would be and DIM would be you know higher on the list so I would I would probably recommend taking that especially if your diet's not great now you know there's no amount of pills in the world that's going to make a bad diet suddenly a good diet so don't think that you can simply take a bunch of pills and continue eating, you know, uh, not a very good diet and, and somehow the pills are going to mitigate the, the effects, you know, that are lacking in your diet or maybe even the negative effects of the diet. So a, a handful of pills are not going to mitigate those negative effects of a poor diet, but they can definitely supplement a healthy diet. So I, I would you know, I always recommend to try to do more of a plant-based diet and then add supplements onto that. Um, where I would also tend to use um, I3C or DIM would be, you know, if you have worsening dysplasia, if you have CIN2 or CIN3, especially if you've had it for a while or it's not wanting to go away, maybe you've already had treatment, maybe, you, maybe you've already had a leap, maybe you've had two leaps, because now you're kind of, you know, push is coming to shove at that point. If you're at CIN3 and you don't resolve this, you know, it could potentially develop into cervical cancer and obviously that's something that everybody's trying to avoid. So in the cases of, CIN, of, of CIN3 or, or severe dysplasia especially, I'm much more likely to use DIM and I3C in those circumstances. Some of what also determines whether I use I3C or DIM have to do with age and other potential symptoms and other conditions. I'm less likely to use DIM and I3C in somebody who's younger, um, you know, and I'm a little bit more likely to use it in somebody that's maybe mid, late 30s, 40s, perimenopausally. So in other words, um, I'm less likely to use it in somebody young unless they're having something that would indicate some sort of estrogen metabolism issue. So if you're having symptoms that seem um, estrogen related or due to an imbalance in estrogen, regardless of age, I would um, be more likely to use I3C and DIM. The reason I say um, perimenopausal as well as women, maybe mid-30s, late-30s, is because a lot of women in their mid-30s 
um, will start getting some estrogen imbalance. It's almost it's almost perimenopausal in nature. Nature they may be um, you know 15 years from actually hitting menopause, but a lot of women in their mid 30s will start having some fluctuations, and those fluctuations are often characterized by um, a little bit of estrogen dominance. So estrogen dominance just means that. Uh, you may not be getting an overproduction of estrogen, but what you're getting is often an insufficient production of progesterone, which gives you a relative estrogen dominance. And that can be associated with a lot of symptoms, including a little bit of an increased risk in developing estrogen-sensitive cancers like, like breast cancer. So what's better, I3C or DIM? I've always used them interchangeably. Um, however, uh, I3C is a little bit unstable, and the effects of these um, glucosinolate compounds, I3C as well as DIM, are really um, are gotten via DIM. So the beneficial effects, um, although there's studies showing that there's benefits to I3C independently, um, they seem to be more gotten through the action of DIM. So again, as I mentioned earlier, indole 3 carbonyl is converted into DIM in the gut, and DIM is a more stable compound. So it probably makes a little more sense um, to use DIM. Now you'll, you'll once in a while see different things. You know, the problem with nutraceuticals is that, you know, a company that produces DIM is going to say DIM is better, and a company that produces I3C is going to say I3C is better. So, you know, if you that's what can be frustrating when you look up things like this on the internet is you're going to sometimes get conflicting information, but either one is probably good. I use DIM Advantage from Thorn Research, so I have a link in the video description below that goes directly to my dispensary. In the dispensary, I have DIM Advantage, um, which is a DIM compound along with a sulforaphane um, glucosinolate compound which is sort of the precursor to I3C, there are some benefits of these upstream compounds. So again, it's, you know, it's probably better to be eating cruciferous vegetables as long as you can get enough of them and on a regular basis, in other words, every day, because there's other things in these plants um, that have other beneficial effects aside from indole 3 carbonyl and DIM. So you, ultimately you should be eating them. But um, again, like I said, I would often supplement with these in addition to having a healthy diet just because of the fact that in some circumstances, the consequences of having unregulated HPV activity is going to be um, potentially catastrophic. The amount I typically prescribe of of either I3C or DIM is somewhere between 200 and 400 milligrams per day. Um, probably best doing those in divided doses and then um, always taken with food. I hope you like this video. Please hit the like button and if you like the video, please share it.